Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner and this is stage 19 of Giro d'Italia. Fabulous stage today. We're back in the mountains after yesterday's very long flat stage. Exciting finish yesterday. I loved it. The beginning was full of energy and the finish was absolutely beautiful with Alberto Bettiol's win. Today's stage we're looking at some good racing because you know the beginning's going to be fast and hard. It's 166 kilometers, about 105 miles in length, three climbs. First two aren't so bad, but what makes those difficult is the backside. The descent is what's crazy. The last climb, incredibly hard, 10K long, about 9% steep, Alpe de Mira. It's a fabulous climb and it's going to leave some excitement on today's stage for us to enjoy for sure now stage starts much just like yesterday attacks are going left and right big groups small groups big groups again and it's ag2r that's the most aggressive team there they'll finally get the break established about 125k to go in the stage we're talking about 40k of racing so you know the legs were tired of all those aggressive guys trying to get in the break ag2r get the american larry warbass in there and so they're all set Problem is, that break ain't going anywhere. They're allowed about four and a half minute lead and that's it and right away it's bike exchange that's setting tempo on the front again. When we hit the first climb, they get a little bit of help over the top with the Kunik quick step, just throwing in like crazy down the technical curvy descent. These descents in Italy are just fabulous. They are so fun to ride. When I spent my time with Lamprey back in 2014, I was training around Como and the descents are just insane. Narrow, tight, curvy switchbacks all the way down, and De Kunik Quick Step are taking advantage of this. When we come out of the bottom down there, they got a good sized group, but it's missing someone important. Inos have lost Danny Martinez, and he got split off, and he's in the second chase group chasing like crazy. He's got some help back there because they'll bring Filippo Ghana out of the front group and they'll set him back to the second to start chasing to get Danny Martinez back in the front. Now this is the first mistake that I see from Bike Exchange because they're not riding the front with the Kunik Quick Step. You see a little chatter back there between the two teams with the Kunik Quick Step trying to motivate Bike Exchange, I believe, to get to the front and start chasing. This was a mistake. They had a very good rider, a very good domo stick for Egon Bernal back there and Martinez, and they got him isolated. And instead, Bike Exchange want no part of riding the front at this point in time. Kunik quick step, they're going all out back there, and it's taken Salvatore Puccio and Filippo Ghana, the world time trial champion, in order to close this gap. They do close it, and they do an amazing job. And Danny Martinez, he thanks his teammates at the back of the front group and then goes straight up to his leader, Egon Bernal, so he can be in the right position for the rest of the day. Now, I want to point something out back there before Martinez is able to close the gap with Filippo and Salvatore Puccio. They get a little help from Milano. The UAE Team Emirates rider is on the front drilling it. And this is a big amount of help because you have to remember, he's a lead out man. So he's big, he's powerful, and he has huge bursts of speed. And he's putting it to use right now for the Inos guys to win the overall here at the Giro d'Italia. You ask yourself when you're sitting on the couch, why is he doing it? Well, Martinez is Colombian. Egon Bernal's Colombian, and it just so happens, not really, that Milano's Colombian too. So there's a little bit of country love here at the Giro, trying to wrap this overall victory up for Colombia and Egon Bernal. Now that's not going to be the last excitement of today's stage, because the penultimate climb, they go up at a reasonable pace, but Inos aren't messing around. They're going over the top now with the whole team on the front, taking the descent in the safest, best position possible. The Kuna Quick Step, though, they still remember what just happened. They'll fly by Inos on the descent and they'll try to do it again. Only this time, you know it's not going to happen because Inos have their team already at the front and in position and waiting. Anytime when you're a bike racer, you can forget what happened two days and three days ago from a team attacking on a descent or something. But when it just happened to you on the climb before, you're not going to forget. So Inos is right there with the Kuna Quick Step. They're still bombing the descent again, taking risk all over the place. And when they come out at the bottom, all the GC favorites are still there. Through the valley, Bike Exchange gets on the front again with the Kuna Quick Step, and they'll start the last climb 
right behind the break, 20, 20 seconds, 30 seconds or so, when they make the left turn with 10K to go. The breakaway will get caught right away, and it's the Kuna quick step that's drilling it on the front until the last guy, James Knox, pulls off, and then Almeida lights it up with about 7K to go. This was the second mistake that I seen from Bike Exchange. Simon Yates hesitates and doesn't go directly with Almeida. If he would have been straight on his wheel, he could just follow the attack right there, but Simon Yates always prefers to hang out a little bit in the back and in the shadows. I believe it looks like he's probably waiting to see if someone else is gonna go. He waits about 500, 800 meters, and then he goes after Almeida, and that's when we start seeing some excitement. Because when Almeida went, he's way back on GC, somewhere hovering around eight to 10th on GC, and so Egon Bernal and Ineos don't have to cover that move. They'll ride tempo when Almeida goes, but just smooth tempo. And it's not until Simon Yates throws in that great attack that all of a sudden now you see Ineos have to accelerate and start keeping some pace. All the big GC favorites will go with Simon Yates. We're talking Almeida was already up there. Vlasov goes, Damiano Caruso follows, and George Bennett's got some climbing legs and he's deciding he's going to try to win the stage, so he's following too. Right away, Ineos fantastic they messed up the first descent with martinez back there getting lost but they are beautiful now two days ago two stages ago we saw Egon bernal try to go with adam yates and he ended up blowing and losing a minute's time on that particular summit finish now clearly they've discussed what happened on that stage clearly they've realized that Egon bernal does not have the form on simon yates that he had on week one and week two now they've changed the plan. They realize what the mistake they made. Now they're going to let all of the favorites, I mean, we're talking about second, third, fourth, all the guys are up there with Almeida's group and Simon Yates is driving it on the front. There's Inos back there, Jonathan Castor Viejo, Danny Martinez, and Egon Bernal just setting tempo and they're holding that group at about 15, 20 seconds. Hugh Carthy will throw in an attack and he'll pay dearly for it later as he'll get popped from the leaders and lose time on today's stage. Inyo's train, they're just absolutely fantastic. Never changing and going to a hard rhythm, just steady and good pace all the way up the climb for Egon Bernal to keep his legs as fresh as possible and out of the wind. Many, many times I'm asked, how much does drafting actually help on a climb this steep. We're talking 10% pitches on this particular day, and I'm telling you, it's massive. You can save easily 10 watts, if not 15 to 25, depending on the wind conditions. So Egon Bernal is getting a beautiful draft behind his two Ineos teammates right now, while Simon Yates is up front throwing in. Now, Simon Yates looks fantastic, but he's in the wind the whole time. He's dislodged Vlasov, Damiana Caruso fell off, George Bennett has fallen off, and back there, the Ineos guys are just picking them off one by one. Jonathan Castor Viejo is pulling amazing. He is doing from six and a half kilometers all the way to about three and a half kilometers to go, when then it's Danny Martinez that takes over. Martinez does a good job of bringing back about 10 seconds on Simon Yates' solo chance for the win up there and remember Simon Yates is trying to go for the pink jersey too and get as much time as he possibly can. Danny Martinez does a great job of keeping the pace even and if not bringing back 10 seconds when he finally blows at two and a half k to go. It's Egon Bernal that has to take up the front. He's had an armchair ride so far all the way to two and a half k to go. Remember when it's Simon Yates up there who is doing a drag race against two Ineos domestiques and now doing a drag race against the pink jersey wearer, Egon Bernal. Egon's digging deep and he'll get rid of Almeida and Damiano Caruso. And remember, Caruso was second on GC. We finally saw him come out of the shadows on today's stage when he tried to put the pink jersey in danger. It's not going to happen. He's going to get popped with less than 2K to go. Almeida will find his way back to the Colombian's wheel while Simon Yates is just digging with everything he can. And Simon Yates will take an amazing win for bike exchange as they rode all day long for their race leader. He'll gain some more time up on second and a little bit more time, of course, on pink jersey wearer Egon Bernal. 
Aegon Bernal will lose some time to Almeida as Almeida jumps him with about 400 meters to go to get second. Aegon Bernal will come through at third. A spectacular ride when you're talking about intelligence, calmness, and patience from Team Ineos. Clearly, they went, they went and discussed that stage two days ago in the mountains and how much time Aegon lost. They realized on today's stage, Simon Yates is climbing better. Plan A, keep the team together, keep it smooth, keep Aegon Bernal back there rested for as long as possible, which is what Jonathan Castroviejo did beautifully. Danny Martinez with a strong one, one and a half kilometer pull there till two and a half K to go. Aegon Bernal, he's wearing the pink jersey. Eventually you have to be at the front. He does and he salvages and does damage control again on today's stage. We'll see him afterwards. He'll give one of his uh, staff members there the little wink. That means he did everything to plan. It went perfect. It was damage control on what today's stage was. Tomorrow's stage is going to be exciting because we know Simon Yates is climbing better, but he needs at least a minute and a half back on the pink jersey there, Aegon Bernal. If he can find a minute and a half, we got some drama for the last time trial, right? We're talking about he needs only a minute, minute and a half when we get into the last time trial, if he can have another spectacular day tomorrow. But how do they do it? This is the problem when you look at the Giro. The teams aren't massively stacked in depth. Now, if you had a team, say, Jumbo Visma, and they're going in with Primoz Roglic and he's behind three minutes and you got a stage like tomorrow, you can just drill Walt Van Art on the penultimate climb and drill it as hard as you possibly can and make the Ineos rider Egon Bernal suffer on the penultimate climb and then just try to blow him apart on the last climb. But Simon Yates doesn't have that team, right? Simon Yates does not have a Walt Van Art back there that can just destroy guys with one, two climbs to go on a grand tour. So Simon Yates is in a predicament. If he goes early, they're going to do the same tactic tomorrow that we saw today. Egon Bernal is going to let his two, his two lieutenants up there, ride good tempo, hard, do damage control, and then he's going to take off again with two, three kilometers to go on tomorrow's stage. But he's probably still going to lose time if Simon Yates can have another spectacular day like he did today. So we'll have a little bit more drama going into the time trial if Simon Yates can gain a minute or a minute and a half on tomorrow's stage. He does not need to win it, but he needs to get some more time back on tomorrow's stage. So keep that in mind when you're watching that. In terms of the breakaway for tomorrow's stage, I think we're gonna see much like we did today. Lots of attacks and then one of the teams getting to the front and driving it fast and hard to try to wear out Egon Bernal. It was an exciting stage today, fantastic to watch. I love the tactics from Ineos. They were absolutely spot on and beautiful after two days ago losing so much time. Today, perfect, with the exception of Danny Martinez's position on the first ascent. Now, bike exchange. In my mind, a couple mistakes. Why not get on the front with the Kuna quick step through that first valley after the first descent and just put as much time or suffer or try to make suffer Danny Martinez back there so that he can't get back to his race leader? We know now Danny Martinez is first lieutenant for Aegon Bernal. That's important. If you can get rid of him tomorrow, keep an eye on something like that. But I don't see it happening. Ineos will talk about what happened on that descent on today's stage and make sure that it never happens again on tomorrow's stage. Great racing. Tomorrow is going to be a beautiful stage. And of course, the time trial on the last day. Hope you guys love the butterfly effect and I'll see you guys real soon.